How's it going, you guys? So in this video, I'm going to be responding to the responders of the video that What I've Learned had posted about uh, beef not solving climate change or not solving uh, our environmental issues. Um, so basically, uh, I, I watched, I first watched What I've Learned's video and what I've learned made an amazing video that it seems like nobody freaking watched, okay? All of these vegan videos, that are all these vegan people, these vegan channels that are coming out and responding to what I've learned in this video, they're not addressing the actual claims that what I've learned made in, in this video. Um, at least the ones I watched or not. Uh, they're almost like diverting from the entirety of all the points that what I've learned made in this video. Um, so I would like, for example, one video I watched, um, the entire video was just breaking down a study um, about like corn um, and uh, like basically feeding cows with corn or whatever. And if you remove cows from the equation that um, there's gonna be all this extra corn or some crazy shit like that. And it had nothing to do with the main points of what I've learned made in his video. Uh, so anyway, uh, and all of the comments on that vegan person's video were like, oh my god, I'm so happy you made this video because, you know, when I watched what I've learned's video, it was going to convert me to eating meat again, and, it, and, I, and I was really going to quit veganism if someone didn't debunk it, blah, blah, blah. And I'm just wondering if these people even actually watched the video or not because um, yeah so so what are the main claims that were made in what I've learned this video um, first of all um, essentially over 90 percent wait a second how much was it was it 90 it was over 85 percent of the food that is fed the grains that are fed to the, these cows are non-edible grains, okay? They, so for example, like human beings, when we eat corn, for example, and I don't eat corn, right? Uh, we don't eat the husks. We don't eat the, uh, what do you call it? Like the stem or whatever in the middle, um, the base, okay? We don't eat those parts of the corn. So they actually feed it to the cows. Um, and when they refine white rice, they throw away the bran and the husks and stuff, and they'll make other things with it. Um, but they'll also give a lot of that, a lot of the byproducts of the refining process to these cows. So the vast majority of the food that's fed to the cows are food that was going to be wasted anyway. Okay. So if we got rid of cows. Well, the, well, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to go that far into it. But yeah. So. Um, Cows are doing us a favor by eating all of these inedible parts of these grains that humans are throwing away, that humans are not eating. Um, so they're kind of doing us a favor because imagine all of that um, in inedible parts of the food wasting into the atmosphere um, because food waste is one of the main contributors to our environmental problems as far as food is concerned. And um, that was another point that they, that they made in, the, in what I've learned in this video is that um, the vast majority of the food that's wasted is, um, is plant foods, okay? Either it's inedible parts of the plant foods that we can't actually eat, or it's just wasted plant foods because for whatever reason, people decide to throw it away. Please excuse the lightning and weather sounds in the back. Um, so I didn't see them addressing that, that argument that the majority of the food that the, the grains that cows are eating are inedible by humans. They're waste products of the grain industry, basically. Um, so I found that interesting. Uh, what's another thing? They didn't address the fact, uh, the, the point that what I've learned made, where he said that over 94%, or the, you know, the expert in some of the studies that they put on there, which he didn't even mention, 94, over 94% of the water that is fed to these, um, these cows are, are uh, uh, green water. And basically what that means is it's, uh, it's water from, from the rain and uh, that's already going to be there anyway, whether the cows are there or not. 
um, that the cows will lick up from the grass and stuff like that. It's recycled water from the environment. It is not um, water that um, you know would otherwise be be used uh, by humans. Um, it's not like we're pumping all of our resources into these cows. Like they're getting largely, re pretty much everything is recycled, either from the plant food industry, the grain industry, or um, rainwater that would be there anyway. Um, and those and the and the thing that people need to understand is that's substantially more green water than what um, a lot of plant foods would 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 get. For for example. Um, the co cotton, for example, that cotton is a huge problem. Um, cotton, uh, the cotton industry requires like three times the water that one pound of beef requires, like to make one cotton shirt. I mean, the number is is crazy. Um, anyway, they didn't even talk about the the water arguments that that was made in the video. So, um, what else? So, and the other thing is, so I saw some channels that were spreading um, uh, misinformation essentially. So, uh, uh, so, they, were, so they were addressing this, uh, this idea that, that cows only make up like under 2% of total greenhouse gas emissions from the United States, for example, uh, from first world countries, okay? So they were they were they were um, debunking that try, trying to debunk that statement trying to battle that statement by citing another paper that claims um, emissions from from beef is like way way more and here's the problem with that that was addressed in what I've learned this video is that these studies that these vegans are citing are worldwide emissions from beef and. There is a reason why worldwide emissions do not reflect um, the same numbers that we gather from first world countries. And that's because worldwide emissions is including um, uh, some of the, the far more toxic, environmentally toxic and less efficient um, uh, practices in, in, in animal agriculture from these third world countries. And I don't want to name certain countries that were that were mentioned because I, I you know I might misquote them or something. But basically when you look at worldwide emissions from the beef industry, the vast majority of those emissions are coming from third world countries who are using inefficient practices that um, that should be addressed. Those the the way that they're doing those animal the animal agriculture in those third world countries needs to be changed. They need to update their practices with the more modernized um, animal agriculture practices that we do, for example, here in the United States, where we produce far less emissions. Uh, so people, especially in the vegan camp, like they don't, they, I don't even know if they're capable of looking at it this way, but the beef industry is constantly trying to lower their, their emissions and make it as efficient and, and um, and easy on the environment as, as, as possible. But um, yeah, so if you look at emissions from a first world country from the beef industry, it's, ex it's extremely minuscule. But if you look at in, uh, emit, uh, numbers that include these third world countries, then it's a completely different story. So yeah, if you know, you're, and then the other thing is um, again, are you buying your beef locally? Now, this wasn't talked about in either of these videos, but I buy all of my beef is local Texas beef. Um, and so it, has, it travels far less miles to get here. So there's le far less emissions on my local Texas beef than there is on avocados shipped to me from um, Central America or whatever, Peru or, or whatever, or South America, or from Mexico. You know, which is technically North America, <laughs> and I'm not into geography, guys. I'm sorry if I got that wrong. But point is, and, and then the other thing, like grass-fed beef that's flown uh, all the way from freaking New Zealand or Australia or, or Brazil or whatever. Like, I, I don't give a crap about, like, as far as the environment's concerned, even my health. Um, anyway, that that doesn't matter. Okay, so. 
Um, yeah, the vast majority of plant foods that people are getting on their plate are shipped from some other part of the country or some other part of the world. Um, and so some of these videos were, were quoting um, studies that claimed even if uh, we brought transportation emissions down to zero, that um, beef production still would need to be addressed because we'd still be like substantially destroying the environment or something like that. And it's, again, it's because they're quoting, um, they're quoting studies that include third world countries. So you guys gotta be real careful and be really well read to be able to, to debunk misinformation. And admittedly, there is misinformation that's being spread by some of these animal-based uh, people now, and it's kind of fucked up, actually. Uh, but typically, these are more like political issues that they like to lie about. Like, for example, I hate to call him out, but Paul Saladino recently um, was all in on that whole idea that Biden is trying to remove red meat, which is not entirely true. And then he missed. He, and then after he got exposed for that, he posted a video. Uh, misquoting Camilla Harris, which by the way, I don't, I never have been, been for Biden at all. And there's certain very creepy, dis like disgusting things have been found. Um, and you know, whatever. Um, like, I don't want you guys to think that I'm voting for anyone because I'm really not. I, whatever. But the point is that Paul Soladino, Paul Soladino, um, has, been spreading some misinformation politically as well. Um, so, but no one, no one looks at the source material. No one looks at the original clip and views it in its entirety. No one on these vegan channels seem to even have watched what I've learned this video. Because if they did, it would be very, very hard for them to trust these vegan channels again. Um, so, yeah, and I mean, there were a lot of other really good arguments that were made in what I've learned in this video. Um, but really, if you guys want to hear it all, please just watch that video and listen to what they're saying. And then if you really want the, the facts and the science, what you really should do is uh, buy the book, Sacred Cow, Sacred Cow, by Rob Wolf and Diana Rogers, because it talks about every single aspect of all of this. And, um, and it also lists studies and things and the references so you can look, up, look them up for yourself. So one more thing, one more point that they brought up in what I've learned's video that was like, again, just look glossed over and then they tried to like band-aid it with like um, some bullshit. So I see these vegan videos that claim um, if cows were removed that we could use all of that land that we raise cow cattle on currently um, to grow fruits and vegetables and things instead. But one of the main points that was addressed in what I've learned video is the fact that the like the vast majority of this of the land, I think it was like one third, one third of the land that's being used for animal agriculture, um, would be completely dead soil, dead land if it wasn't for these cattle. Because these cattle are, for one, like using they're, they're producing natural natural manure. They're basically shitting on there. So this is synthetic fertilizers are not being used. So it's saving land through that mechanism. Um, but they are helping to recycle uh, um, CO2 and things back into the into atmosphere. And they're helping to keep the soil healthy, essentially. Um, like these cows are a vital part of that ecosystem and without the cows that land would just completely die okay and for some reason they're they're just like glossing over that even though it was a vital point that was made in in, in the video and they're like yeah like uh um the fact is like we need these cows to basically like i don't even know what they think their cows are going to happen and i'm like we need these cows to die off basically uh, so that humans can't eat meat anymore, or they can moderate their meat eating. And we're going to use that same land now to grow more corn and whatever the fuck they're going to grow. It doesn't work that way. And that was 
That was addressed pretty clearly in what I've learned's video. So, you know, honestly, I'm I'm pretty annoyed. It, it, it hurt me. Like it hurt my brain. It hurt my brain. Like watching these videos, just like cite their own studies and, and, and whatnot and trying to debunk things that had that had very little to do if anything at all to do with the with the actual video with the points in the video like some study that they weren't even really emphasizing like okay and then uh, some of these video some of these these channels that, that did address some of these claims they were just basically committing the same fallacies that were already exposed in the, in the very video they're trying to debunk using statistics from third world countries and shit so it's it's just dumb so anyway um, yeah go watch what I've learned in this video and you know be careful about all this and, and a really big thing that a lot of people don't realize, so a lot of these vegans, they try to use this argument that um, humans do not need meat to be healthy, and all meat does is cause heart disease and um, destroy the environment. So why should we have it in our food supply? So what they don't understand, because they can't accept it for some reason, is that um, there's a lot of people, like myself, who have very specific digestive problems that from, I tried freaking everything for a long time to solve and I was seeing some success at a certain point um, but for years I could not digest whole grains, nuts and seeds and it was only until I did three years on almost exclusively red meat staying away from these highly fibrous foods that I was able to kill off whatever was in my digestive system so that I could start to digest some of these foods. So if you freaking like start taxing red meat, I mean, you can almost say that you're discriminating people like me in a way. You know, oh, you don't need it to survive and it's just killing you and blah, blah, blah. Like, motherfucker, that was all I could freaking eat for so long. And if it wasn't for red meat being available and cheap enough for me to afford, uh, I don't know what I would have done. I would have had psoriasis and irritable bowel syndrome forever. And then what the hell am I going to do? Rely on doctors and get my freaking colon removed and shit? So, yeah, I, I honestly feel like a lot of the, this push for plant-based diets and to remove red meat from the food supply, I really do feel like it is fueled by um, these large gas industry, you know, uh, oil industries and pharmaceutical companies and and these large corporations, and I'm not even talking, and I mean, whatever, Tyson Foods or whatever, um, whatever, to prevent people, you know, to, so that they can have full control over the food supply, you know, with their fake meat products and things. They're gonna, they're gonna centralize the food supply. They wanna control your medicine, control your food, um, whatever, okay? And that's where this push is going. But the good thing is that um, it's highly unlikely that the government is going to even tax red meat. If that does happen, that would be really crazy. That would be something that we should probably be very, very concerned about. Um, but that's unlikely to happen, no matter what you think about Biden or Camilla Harris or, or anything like that. Um, and for those who, who may not know yet, um, that stuff that came out recently that Joe Biden was going to um, tax red meat or, or he said something about removing red meat by, you know, for his climate change plan. He said nothing about red meat. I looked all over and I couldn't find anything. And then Paul Soledino had to came out and come out and admit that he was wrong. But um, anyway, so yeah, like I am definitely not down with people taxing red meat and stuff like that. Um, and I'm not voting for Joe Biden or advocating for him or even trying to defend him or anything. But what I'm concerned about is misinformation. I'm concerned about lies. I'm concerned about people who they're pushing an agenda with very little regard for, you know, the truth. And then also for some of the nuances, like people who have health conditions that they can't eat freaking plant-based diets. These plant-based people don't want to hear that shit. They are convinced that, 
oh, if you just freaking detox enough, or really, the, the smart vegans who aren't really killing themselves that fast, or whatever, um, they're eating cooked foods, thank God. Um, they claim it's like a gut infection, or you need probiotics, or whatever. But no. So leave your question, comments down below, and I'll talk to you all next time.